Thank you for joining me for another Monday morning with Mo Moody. And uh, reminiscing in my past, I wanted to tell you a quick story about when I created basically GameStop before GameStop was invented. And what I mean by that is I came up with a scheme, an idea, a business plan, and a model that I enacted as a young child in my community, which was at the time Glenwood Housing Project Development or Public Housing. Um, and I knew that I had the gift of entrepreneurship because of this story. And here we go. At least in my neighborhood growing up, everyone really loved and would cherish their video games. And having the newest video game was almost like a status symbol at my current age of a very young, you know, early developmental age growing up in Brooklyn in the inner city projects where, you know, a lot of us just had single moms that worked double jobs just enough to afford, you know, this one video game whenever it came out. Um, and it was, it was always like an astronomical number at the time. So, but what wind up happening, which is a very unique factor, is that you would play the game and you'd probably beat it or you played it a bunch of times over and over again. And that new game wasn't a new game feel to you anymore. It lost all value. But to your friend who doesn't have the game, there's a lot of value there. And all of us had that one game. So I came up with this idea of creating a trading bartering network where we would trade games with each other. Now, <laughs> growing up in the inner city Brooklyn projects, there was a lot of complexity, <laughs> you know, to pull that off. And I realized something that came from um, Roosevelt of uh, speaking softly and carrying a big stick. I realized that I needed to have a big stick behind me. Um, I was lucky enough that my uh, good friend, who was part of my crew, or my group of friends growing up, um, he was like the third biggest guy in the projects. So um, he was down, he was, you know, there. And so my thought process was that I need to basically recruit the top three biggest guys. So there would be no one that will be able to, you know, to oppose us. So I went to the number two guy and was like, hey, the number three guy is down. Do you want to get down? And what is the benefit for you? What's in it for you? Right. And I was like, well, you get one video game for free that you don't even have to trade. We just give you one. It'll probably come from, you know, my inventory, like my collection. Uh, but they didn't know that. I was just like, you'll get one free. What do I got to do? Just make sure everyone stays honest and there's no fighting. That's it. <laughs> it's simple. So then we went to the number one guy. I was like, hey, the number two, number three is down. Do you want to get down? He's like, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's give it a try. Right? Because it was easier when you had uh, group buy-in. And that's what I learned a lot about, you know, group buy-in and community buy-in. And that's how you start that process by affecting change with the leaders in the community right so those were the influencers of my community the three toughest guys so then i went around to all my friends and went around to everyone in the neighborhood and i was like hey i'm starting this you know this thing we're doing this trading process and this is very simple once you trade a game it's permanent there is no trade backs okay you can't say hey you stole from me and now i want to fight you tomorrow or cause any type of negativity or any type of you know discretion this is a system of trust Right. And then they go, <laughs> well, Mo, why should we trust you? And I was like, well, I got the three biggest guys in the neighborhood behind me. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, OK, so all I got to do is if I trade a game, that's it. I'm like, and now think about the benefits that come with this. Right. That game that you have right now, for example, my game was a uh, double dragon. Right. And the uh, number one guy, his game was um, skate or die. I'm like, you've played Scared by how many times? Sometimes you beat it. How fast can you beat it? Real quick. Have you played Double Dragon yet? No. I wouldn't play Scared or Die. You have Double Dragon. And I have Double Dragon. So let's trade. Because for you, there's no value. But to these games, to trade between the both of us, there's value. And that's how we can make our quality life here better. And they're like, what are you talking about? I work so hard. Yeah. But it's boring to you. It has no value. But now you can get something of value from nothing. And all of us can be happy crazy concept and what wound up happening is that I, the entire project was trading and swapping games and there was no fighting just the essence of the big stick kept everyone in line and we had a golden era about two years of just non-stop trading and fun and you know i kept the tally of who had which games and who got which whatever you know i kept books even then when i was a young kid just to keep track of things you know keep records i kept a lot of it in my head but i still you know at a you know at an age of like uh nine years old you know and 10 and 11 
Um, but then when I became, uh, uh, you know, 12 or 13, give or take, um, GameStop opened up. And I was like, you know, well, you know, someone's like, hey, I don't want to trade with you, Mo, because GameStop's over there by Georgetown, across from the IHOP International House of Pancakes. I'm like, so I go over to GameStop, and it was the most amazing, you know, thing. It was my vision, my business model taken to a higher level, just because they had more financial resources. You got to understand, I'm just an inner city kid from the projects from Brooklyn. Like, I had nothing. I made something out of nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I created happiness and peace in my neighborhood from nothing. Uh, GameStop clearly had financial backing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and not only were they trading and swapping games, they were making profit. And that made me look at that situation completely different. I said to myself, this was a great idea of Mo. You had a great idea, and the proof in the pudding is that someone made a business off of your model, which they had no effect in connection with you. But, you know, the fact that you're thinking and aligning with these people, which is great, but they had a, another step. They had a way to monetize, you know, a little financial interaction in between, but it worked. It kept the doors open, and they were able to have video games where you can now play the games. You didn't have to, like, buy them. You could just play them there in the store, and then if you like it, you buy it. So, you know, of course, I couldn't compete, um, and that whole, uh, you know, whole thing fell apart, but for those two years, okay, for those two years, we had peace and prosperity, and for the little bit that we had, which was financially of wealth or of, of value for my neighborhood, we were changing and exchanging changing and bartering in peace and happiness and there was very little fighting during that time it was great and the aha moment for me was that if i can create something like this at a young age then i do have the uh, you know the like the gift you know uh, um, that was the, like I, there's something there i should explore entrepreneurship you know i should really look into this um so i just want to do you know open up a little bit and give you you know a past story from like my neighborhood where i basically created gamestop before gamestop and um yeah enjoy your monday morning